The FastTran was a rotating magnetic drum storage device developed by Spiri Ran for use with their Univac 1100 series and Univac 490-494 computers. The FastTran was also used with Univac's 418 computer and sometimes with non-Univac machines as well. Historically, the FastTran holds a very unique place in the development of early computer storage technologies. The FastTran was a huge machine, built around a 6-foot long cast iron drum which rotated at 880 RPM. It weighed nearly 5,000 pounds. In the early 1960s, it was one of the fastest and highest capacity mass storage devices of its time. However, the machine's success was thwarted, largely by the laws of physics. The rotating drum produced so much angular momentum when operating that the entire unit fought back against the force of gravity, causing the entire machine to want to move around the room on its own. Physicists call this phenomenon gyroscopic precession. To say the least, this two-ton meandering behemoth was a source of serious potential havoc. Even when the machine was securely bolted to the floor, there persists a legend of the machine's massive drum breaking loose from its housing and smashing through a nearby wall. With FastTrend, the term system crash took on a whole new meaning. The U.S. Army tried installing a FastTrend unit in one of their mobile computing trucks, but when the truck tried to turn around a corner, the angular momentum force tipped the truck on its side. The U.S. Navy installed a machine on board one of its ships, but the drum's rotation made the ship's navigation through turns too problematic. Ironically, one of Speary Rand's predecessors was Speary Gyroscope Company, founded in 1910 by Elmer Speary. Speary had invented the gyro compass and other navigation equipment, which the company continued to successfully sell to the U.S. and U.K. military and eventually to NASA for many years. The troublesome gyroscopic problem was ultimately resolved by Spiri in the new FastTran 2. FastTran 2 incorporated two side-by-side -side storage drums that rotated in opposite directions. This configuration reduced the negative effects of the angular momentum. The FastTran 2 became a viable large-scale mass storage device. The FastTran 2 in the U.S. Air Force's automated base supply system. In 1965, the United States Air Force began implementing a large-scale program to automate air base supply systems supporting 110 U.S. Air Force bases. This was the first Air Force-wide implementation of a centrally designed computer-based logistics support system. The Air Force approved the initial concept of an automated standard supply system in 1962 and selected the Univac 1050 Model 2 as their computer of choice in November 1963. Univac 1050 Model 2 computers were installed throughout the world. This system was designed to provide standardized programs and procedures for base supply operations throughout the Air Force. This included logistics, personnel, accounting, and finance. Prior to this implementation, Air bases had various types of computers and punch card equipment, but there was no standardized automated system in place. The 1050 Model 2 was the military version of the commercial Univac 1050 model. Here we see a Univac 1050 Master Control Console used at the U.S. Air Force Base in Da Nang in 1966. The Univac 1050 system was chosen for its effective use in remote sites as an integral part of a centralized electronic data processing system. The Air Force's Univac 1050 Model 2 real-time system had some extra peripherals. The most significant of these was the FastRan drum storage unit. Other peripherals were the card reader card punch, high-speed printer, and communication subsystems linked to remote sites. FastTrand installations included many government agencies as well as private sector and non-U.S. locations.
The U.S. Navy also utilized Fastran units at their naval inventory control points, such as the Naval Aviation Supply Office, Naval Electronics Supply Office, and the Navy Ships Parts Control Center. The Fastrans were used as part of the Navy's worldwide automated inventory supply systems. Australia's Message Relay Switching Center, MRSC, at Paddington utilized three Fastran units along with two Univac 418 computers. The MRSC's Univac computer installation operated very successfully from 1969 until decommissioned in 1988. In the 1960s and early 70s, NASA's Goddard Manned Space Flight Center utilized FastRAN systems as in support of their satellite tracking and data acquisition network known as STADAN. Travelers Insurance Company Travelers Insurance Company of Hartford, Connecticut implemented a major automated policy system employing Univac 490, 492, and eventually 494 machines, and a large number of fast trans storage units. Traveler's successful implementation of this widespread computer network, which was designed to link its data center to 100 field offices, made this the largest real-time application in the industry at this time. Specifications The Fastran 2 contained two magnetic drums, having a total of 13,068 tracks around the drum surfaces. There were 32 groups of 192 tracks on each drum, totaling 6,534 tracks. 6,144 tracks were used for storing data, while 390 tracks were used for spares and for special hardware timing purposes. Data tracks were divided into 64 sectors of 28 36-bit words, making a track equal to 1,792 36-bit words. The read-write functions occurred in bit serial mode at a maximum transfer rate of 37,040 words or 185,200 characters per second. There were 40 read-write heads for each drum, making a total of 80 heads for the entire unit. Average access time was 92 milliseconds. A voice coil actuator moved a bar containing multiple single track recording heads, so the drums operated much like moving head disk drives with multiple disks. The machine's drum made a whirring sound along with the periodic hiss of air. Total storage was just under 130 million 6-bit characters, providing approximately 90 to 100 megabytes of storage by today's comparison. The Fastran 2 was succeeded by the Fastran 3 in 1970, which increased storage density 50%. The Fastran was a highly sensitive and challenging machine to align, maintain, and repair. Periodic on-site maintenance by a Spiri Univac field engineer might involve the use of a clock and sector generator machine like the one shown here, along with an oscilloscope and volt ohm meter. The drum and head cleaning had to be done to precise specifications. Voltages had to be checked and servo mechanisms properly aligned and tested. Fastran devices were used by all branches of the military as well as NASA and other private organizations. They were eventually replaced by more efficient disk drive storage, which became increasingly faster, smaller, and less expensive. Due to stability problems, very few Fastran 1 units were made. The successful Fastran 2 and 3 models sold many units. Despite the hefty price tag, a full installation could cost between $250,000 and $400,000 in 1970, or about $1 to $2 million today. Although exact numbers are not known, Ron Q. Smith, a retired Unisys fellow and historian, suggests many thousands were ultimately sold.
Many memorable stories of working with fast RAN machines exist. Here is a particularly great story shared by Paul Lindquist of the VIP Club. In Ottawa, Canada, Canadian Supply and Services had a Univac 1108 with a FastRAN 2 installed downtown. Next door, workers began building a new high-rise. Since Ottawa sits on granite bedrock, carving out the basement involved lots of heavy blasting. About four times each day for weeks, the blast whistle would blow and the charge would explode, followed by violent shaking of the surrounding properties. Initially, each time there was a blast, the computer system crashed with an unrecoverable input-output error from the fast rand. The fix was ultimately simple. At the sound of the blast whistle, the operator would simply press the System Stop button. After the All Clear was given, the operator would press the Go button, and the system would just take off like nothing had happened. As long as there was no activity on the F2 while the building shook, there was no problem.